Merlin misses Magic Tree has miss Merlin misses on Christmas in came lot um I uh no not the night Okay, chapter three, the night of the round table. A pair of torches dimly lit the drafty in the sands. All of the castle shadow danced on the worn trampers. Wait here some more again. Wait here some more again. I will tell the king of her arrival. She headed through the hall, down archway that led to a great hall. Let's begin," said Annie. "Said to Jack, Jack push his glasses into his place. He and Annie walked quietly over to a big arch and peered in. The kelly of the great hall towered high above a stone wall." At the far end of the room, King Arthur and his knight were sitting around a huge round table. They all wore brown tunics, their shaggy hair and beard. Their names were car- carved in gold letters. On the backs of their cha- chairs, the Knight of the Round Table whispered Jack. Morgan was talking to King Arthur. Beside the king sat, and the woman in a pale gray robe. She has had pale skin and brown curly hair. Quinky Waver, whispered Annie. Morgan left the king, and Jack and Annie moved quickly back into shadows. A moment later, Morgan appeared. I told the king that two special friends of his, of his had just arrived. She said, "Come with me." As they walked, well, Morgan drew. The great hall back shivered. The huge room was dark and damp. There's no fire in the fireplace. A snow floor was so cold that Jack could feel the chill through his sneakers. Arthur stared at them and his crystal gray eyes reading from fog reek. And he said to the king and the queen, and he bowed, and Jack bowed to the queen, smiled, but the king Arthur did not. Her majesty, I did not. You remember Jack and Jenny said Morgan met them last summer in my library. Indeed, I will never forget them. King Arthur said softly. Greeting, Jack. Annie. Greeting, Jack. How do you come to be in Hamlet on this brick night? He came in magic tree house. Said Annie. A shadow crossed the king's face. He looked at Morgan. No, you, you must be. I did not use my magic to bring them there. She said, perhaps a bit of magic still linger in the tree house. And it traveled on its own. What's going on, Jack wondered. What's going on, Jack wondered. Why does King Arthur seem unhappy about the magic tree house? King Arthur looked back at Jack and Danny. However, you can't come. You're welcome in my kingdom. He said. He turned to Queen Graver. These are two friends who once gave me hope and courage in a time of need. Queen Graver smiled again. 
put the sad look in her eyes. I heard much about you, she said. I heard about you too, said Annie. Hello to present my knights, said King Arthur. Sir Boris, Sir Kay, Sir Tristan. As the king named each knight, Jack and Jenny nodded shyly. The knight nodded at them in return. Jack wanted to hear the name Sir Lancelot, the most famous of Camelot knights, but the king never said, Come finally serve me, or gave her an absurd glance. King Arthur said, The king and turned to three empty chairs at the table, and there one sat three who are lost to us now, he said. Lost how? wondered Jack. Me. Sit at their place and sit and join our dinner, King Arthur said. Thank you, said Annie, following Morgan around the table. Jack read the name carved. On the back of the three empty chairs, Sir Lancelot, Sir Gadlapid, Sir Bersigle. Jack took off his backpack and sat down in Sir Lancelot's place as he sat tall and three in the heavy wooden chair. Jack looked at the king and his third knight there calling meat off bones and sort of being wine, wine from heavy goblet. They ate without manner or delight. Jack really wanted to take note. Take, wanted to take note. He reached into her, his pack under the table and pulled out his notebook and pencil. And before she could write a word, the serving boy brought more food. Jack put quickly put the things away. The boy said greasily lap on beef on a stockly piece of bread in front of him. The food looked terrible. Not much of Christmas feet, huh? And he said in a low voice, Jack shook his head. to Morgan and whisper so King Arthur wouldn't hear what happened to the three lost night, she asked. After more the dark wizard cast his spell, the king sought help from the magicians, magicians of Camelot. Morgan said quietly, they told him, told him he must send his knight on a quest to other, to the other world to recapture our kingdom joy. What's the other world? said world said Jack. It is an ancient election land beyond the age of the earth, said Morgan. The place where all the magic first began. Wow, whispered Annie. The king chose the three bravest knights on to junior there. And Morgan, they did not come back. And after turning against the magicians, he blamed magic for all the came up boys. Once he blamed magic of all any kind, from the kingdom forever. But your magic is, whisper Annie, did the king against you too, Arthur? And I have long friendship, said Morgan. He had allowed me to stay in the castle as long as I promised not to practice the art of magic ever again, feeling dread. Reaped over Jack. Does that mean the magic treehouse is? 
when again nodded. Yes, banish from Kmar. She said, I'm afraid this will be her last journey and the last time we see each other. Her eyes filled with tears. She looked. Wait, what's the last time we see each other? Forever, said Annie. Before Morgan could answer, the wooden door swung open with a bang. A wind rushed through the great hall. The choices, torch, torch, and candle flamed brighter, making the shadow leap wildly on the wall. The sound of hoof beat filled the room. Night on a huge horses rode on the archer's doorway. Knight was dressed all in red from his shiny helmet to a long cloak on his back. His horse was dressed in all in green from the armor was that covered his head to the cloak that hung from his saddle. Oh, wow, breathed Annie. Merry Christmas tonight. I have come. Chapter 4, Who Will Go? I have come to see Arthur the King, the Christmas knight said. His deep voice echoed from inside his helmet. His red armor gleamed in the firelight. King Arthur stood up. He stared firstly at the knight. Then he spoke in a calm, steady voice. I'm Arthur the King, he said. Who are you? The knight did not answer Arthur's question. So you're the legendary King Arthur of Camelot, he said in a mocking voice. And these must be the famous knight of the round table. Yes, said King Arthur, and again, I ask you, who are you? You, the Christmas night still did not answer Arthur's question. The spell of the dark was shared has robbed Christmas of it. Joy said, said the Christmas night, has it, has it robbed you and your men? As and your men of your courage as well? You dare to question our courage, King Arthur said in a low, angry voice. King Long is dying! The Christmas night boom. I has no one to marry. To the other world to recap its joy. I have sent my best knight on such a quest, said King Arthur. They never return. Then stand one, then more, Danger the Christmas night. No! shouted King Arthur, pounding his fist on the table. Never again I will I read. Good man to magic the monster and other world. Jack felt a chill of fear. What monster? Then you choose your fate, said the Christmas knight. If you will send no one else to other world, all that your kingdom has gained through time of beauty, music, wonder, and light, all the came lot have ever been or could ever be will be lost and forgotten that forever. No! shouted Annie. Shh! Annie said Jack. Christmas night turned to the night at the table. Who are She boomed. We will, shouted Annie. We will? said Annie. Yes, we will go on a quest. Annie yelled. She jumped up. No, cried Morgan Le Fay. Never, said King Arthur. Annie, said Jack. He, he leaped up from his chair and tried to grab her. Just thunder the Christmas night, he pointed the red glove hand at Annie and Jack. 
the youngest of all, he too will, they will go. You are monkeys! King Arthur shouted. They will go! Boom the night, his word issued. Help the wall. Oh no, thought Jack. Yes, said Annie. He, she pulled Jack toward the Christmas night. He and Arthur turned to his men. Stop them! The full night started to rush toward Jack. And Annie, the Christmas night raises his glove hand high in the air. In an instant, the room felt deathly and quiet. Everyone around the table was still as a stute. Stute. He and Arthur looked like the stute of a various king. Queen Waver looked like the stute of a worry queen. The night of the round table looked like the stute of first night. And Mark and Leafy looked like the stute of a caring friend. Her mouth was open and she was calling out to Jack and Danny. No sound came from her lips. No sound at all. Morgan, said Annie. Annie ran to the table. Shh. Okay. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. Bye.